I am Nisha Charles and I am your presenter for today. Thank you for joining us for SAC TV News. Among the major developments, Princess Margaret Hospital to receive new conference center. Cayman Islands Premier ousted in no confidence vote. UN scales backs Pakistan polio campaign after killings. And in sports, cash pass Buster Warner player banned by DFA. Details of these and other stories after the break. Thank you for staying with us. Now for the details of the news. Sad TV News has received information into the death of a foreign national. He was a client of the Anchorage Hotel while diving during and drowned during snorkeling. His body was transported to the Princess Margaret Hospital's Accident and Emergency Department. Details are sketchy, but Sad TV will provide you with an update in a subsequent newscast. And in more news, President of the Dominica Public Service Union, Mr. Steve Joseph, says that they are convinced without any doubt that a misinterpretation has occurred in regards to the public servants. Contrary to, to what we've heard, even from the officials of, of government, that it is government that, that recommended to the union um, and that we agreed uh, for the negotiation process to continue and to be concluded. It was the union that proposed very early that we seek to conclude negotiations by June of 2012. Mr. Joseph said when the government made the request to extend the negotiations beyond June 2012, the union made it categorically clear that they will only go that route only if government was willing to confirm. That it will implement the conditions and, and recommendations in the classification exercise report. And of course, government was willing to go that route. So it is a demand by resolution that the union made that brought negotiations back to the table. And that is why we are here now. Had, it, had we gone the government route, we would be negotiating um, maybe even in 2013 for the period that has ended June 2012. The other issue Mr. Joseph says that he wants to make very clear is that the union has not agreed on a 1% for the second year. He says they have been invited to a meeting this week and it is not for them to confirm anything that they have not agreed to. Mr. Joseph says it is with a hope that the negotiation process will continue and whatever they have agreed to will be a fair and reasonable increase for public officers. General Secretary of the DPSU, Mr. Thomas Leiter, believes that there are many things that could be done to reduce costs. We cannot on one hand be talking about cutting people, I'm uh, not cutting, but not giving people a reasonable salary increase. And at the same time, we are seeing the size of government increasing. Increasing not by employing rank and file public officers, but political appointments. There are a lot of other ways that we believe that government can, well, we believe government can sit with us, and there are a lot of things that we can together do to cut down on cost. We look at the salaries, salary increases that have been paid to public officers over the past 10 years. Mr. Leiter says that Dominica is one of the blessed Eastern Caribbean countries in terms of resources. But look, at, see what is happening to us. We are not utilizing the things that we have. So we, our, 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 our import bills keep on rising, 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 rising. Right? And when it comes to our exports, we export very little. And you grow. If I, if I am to add, if I am to add anything, We've made calls to grow the economy. You will, you will only be able to afford some of your expenses if you concentrate on growth. The key sectors, uh, agriculture is a key sector. The public servants strongly believe that there needs to be significant investment in sectors that will bring in more revenue for the state. 
In regards to the amount of traffic motorcycle accidents that have occurred in a short space of time during 2012, St. Anne's and St. Paul's parish priest Father Franklin Cuffey says as a parish they are saddened. Father Cuffey explained that what is more saddening is the fact that most of these people are young men. The first funeral I had in our new cemetery was a young man just arriving in, in Dominica at 1 o'clock and by 2.45 he was dead, a 33-year-old young man. And again to promote the persons that Christ died for, that what Christmas is all about. As our World Respect Life Day, we are going to have what we call a motorbike day. He says this event will bring many people as possible together island-wide. Father Cuffey noted that they are hoping to have a motorcade with motorbikes as well as planned activities for the day. Well, we are hoping to have a motorcade with motorbikes and during the day have some activities ready. We are hoping to have on the beat program, you know, discussing what is happening. We are collaborating with the village councils. We are in Maho. We are collaborating with the dealers of motorbikes and, and, and so on. You know, so far, the three people who died in a motorbike accident in the parish, none of them wore helmets. Okay? I say we are, we are saying that Christmas is saying, God says, human life is worth dying for. But if we are to lose our lives so carelessly, you, you know, I think it is time for us to stop and ask, are the authorities doing enough to protect us? He stated that this event will be observed around the same time as World Respect Day. He says it will begin with an assembly at the convent high school, which has been ongoing for a number of years. The parish priests believe that this will get the message across that human life does have value. On March 31st, we had the death of a student just before he, his exam, a state college student just before his exam, knocked by a bike you know, and he was killed a couple of weeks ago. We had another death in, in the community. So it's really not only to sensitize our bikers, but to sensitize us as a nation. Should there be a law saying that we must use helmets whenever we get on a bike? Should there be a law to say that we cannot travel with children on, on or motorbikes, you know? And again, we as drivers, sometimes we are in a hurry. We need to be a little more careful. Motorbike Day will officially be held on Saturday, January 26. In more news, visual artists are being urged to join the Visual Arts Society of Dominica, VASOD, so that they can reap the full benefits from the work they produce. These include people in the many disciplines of fine arts, photography, videography, film and design inclusive of fashion, makeup, hair, clothing and accessories. This was the advice that the participants of a VASOD discussion and networking received on Tuesday, December 8th at the Alliance Process Building. VASOD is a non-profit organization established for the primary purpose of promoting the competitiveness and export readiness of Dominican individuals and corporations in the visual and creative arts industries who are seeking to get artists involved in this sector under one umbrella organization. Mr. Irving Dura, who is the president and founder of the VASOD, stated it is important that visual artists join the VASOD to be unified as there are many opportunities that they cannot take advantage of as individuals but as one body they can. And we are hoping that um, the membership or the, the, the creators out there will realize that the creative industries um, is a very potential sector and uh, our part to play as visual artists in there is also huge and uh, we just I want to encourage all you visual artists out there, painters, drawing, sketching people, designers of every kind. Um, uh, come out and uh, take membership. We have uh, a quick, uh, very good response from the people that use lenses, like photographers and videographers, but the designers and the painters, uh, fine artists that are normally very secluded. Um, we want for you to come out as well and say that you are into design, that you are doing this and that you're doing that, so that you can become part of this one vocal power that can give some sort of a movement to our cause. 
he says as the market in Dominica is a small one, creators have to be innovative and transform work that has already been created to make it one of a kind while exploring the benefits of technology. Mr. Dura pointed out that with the introduction of information technology, artists can use this media to make their work global rather than just be stuck within the borders of Dominica. Some of the benefits of joining the VOSAD, which he highlighted, are training, access to grant funds for projects, and regional or international job opportunities. The president added, if we do not get active as one body, foreign visual artists will come to Dominica's small market and take the opportunities we let slide from our grasp. Executive Director of the Dominica Coalition of Services Industries, the DCSI, Mr. Lester Rivier, pointed out that the DCSI works on behalf of organizations such as these to make sure that they are well recognized to benefit from all, all opportunities available. At a national level, um, decision because the government, in terms of making decisions on behalf of service providers, they do not want to speak to individuals. So they don't want every, any and every individual coming at random, knocking on their doors, speaking of challenges that they face, issues that they face, and, and they're, not, they're not being sure as to whether this is a, 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 a general situation or is it a specific situation. So it's much better to, to, get, to get things done or for individuals to have their needs met if they are a part of an association. He says in terms of grant funding, donors demand that in order to disseminate funds for projects, the visual artists have to be part of an association as they will not do so to any individual participating in an industry. Strength in numbers is the idea we need to develop, he says, as resources can be pulled together and they will have the support of other individuals who share their concerns and all work together to promote their ideas and objectives. You may want to undertake a, a major initiative, but as an individual service provider, you may not, it, it may not be possible to do it on your own because you have limited resources. But by partnering with a larger service provider, a larger firm in, in your field of business, you know have the opportunity to expand, um, to, 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 to actually reach above, above your, normal, your normal weight, basically, and to expand what you can do and expand your, your the opportunities. Um, that, that are available out there. The DCSI has their own website that does web hosting for associations. Mr. Rivia says this is much more cost effective for associations and service providers as well. He added forming linkages will allow people to accomplish things that they never would be able to do on their own, but can only do being part of an association such as the VASOD. At a recent visit to the Princess Margaret Hospital, the PMH, the Health Minister, Honorable Julius Timothy, unveiled plans of a new conference center for the hospital. The building that they planned to refurbish to place the new conference center in was up for demolition when the Health Minister first came into office. He got an engineer to test the integrity of the building and this was their findings. The, the report said the building is strong and can give us another 20 to 30 years. I decided we were not going to spend that money destroying this building, but we were going to utilize it. And this is intended to be our conference center. So we got Ross University involved, and they are keen on providing all the equipment necessary to staff this building. The intention is to have a state-of-the-art podium, a viewing facility, a video conferencing center, as well as table and chairs with the capability of having actual conferences in that building. Each table will have its own speaker system so that the participants can all interact and everybody can hear. We also intend to put an accordion partition just about the middle of the building so that we can also have two sessions at the same time. At the back, our health information unit, that's Dr. Ricketts and his staff, will be accommodated. The health minister says the oncology department will be downstairs that conference center. Ross University will provide all the equipment and furnishings for that department. They would like to open the department in January 2013, but Mr. Timothy says he does not think the contractors will be quite ready as yet.
we're going to have our drug information unit downstairs as well. So this building is going to be fully utilized and the intention is to really make it look good. Because previously when we had any function for the hospital, we had tremendous difficulty because our conference room was really a little cubby hole and we, otherwise we had to go outside, get space from other facilities. He ensures that the conference center will be well kept and well utilized and even went on to say that when it is opened officially, it could be the ideal place to have a cabinet meeting. With the unfortunate passing of former national cricketer and cricket commentator Mr. Tom Lafon, one cricket commentator believes that it is a great loss to Dominica. Mr. Joseph Thomas, who is a relative of Mr. Lafon, said he froze up for about two minutes when he got the news, while stating Mr. Lafon will surely be missed by all who knew him. Mr. Lafon died at the Princess Margaret Hospital on Tuesday, December 18th. He was not only a friend, he was a relative of mine. Um, and, um, you know, it, it really stunned me because the last time I spoke with him, he seemed to be in very great spirits. He seemed to be um, coming on pretty okay. And, um, you know, Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? That is, that is basically how I can describe it. So it came suddenly, and I guess all of us were shocked at it. But, um, you know, in the final analysis, this is one tour of duty that we all have to, you know, live up to. Um, Mr. Thomas says Mr. Lafond was a very strong individual who was a no-nonsense person who put his all in everything that he had to do. As a sports personality, he was well known, I think, throughout Caribbean circles um, from a Dominican standpoint. Certainly from a Dominican standpoint. Um, he managed many a Dominican cricket team. I know he captained the Dominican junior cricket team at one time, played a lot of cricket, managed a lot of cricket, was manager of several Dominican teams, manager of the Winner Islands team for a number of years and um, you know lately he was involved in the management of Cavaliers cricket team and responsible for the bringing to, to the fourth many young athletes many young cricketers and would be seen at matches making sure that they do what it is that they have to do offering his words of advice. Mr. Lafon who was the president of the Cavaliers sports club is described as someone who always had sports at heart. Cavaliers, we can probably consider to be a, a, a retired men's club, but he was involved in the new aspect because there's a new aspect of the club that brought together young cricketers. So not only did Cavaliers have, say, the old guard, but they are responsible as well for bringing in a new cluster of players. Um, that, of course, forms a Division I team, and a number of persons from that team were called in national trials, and a couple of them got on to um, the Winwood Islands senior team, Jinlani Robinson, albeit he's a reserve on the team, but the fact is that he um, was selected. He did enough, I think, to warrant the selectors to have looked at him. He was also the first president of the Winter Park Sports Committee, who managed all the affairs of the park and prior to matches he would supervise the grounds and pitch preparations to ensure everything were in place. Mr. Thomas stated from his personal encounters with Mr. Lafon, he can be described as a very cool but straightforward person. He and I played dominoes at the club, at Swansea Domino Club. He was an ardent member of Swansea Domino Club, um, you know, very in, involved in, in, the, in the playing of, of dominoes. And um, that, that is where the, the bond, the, the bond between Tom and I really developed, um, not only from the, this, but basically from the Swansea Domino standpoint. Um, as a commentator, you said, I, you know, I worked with him as a commentator. Um, and you know, the, the bond, the family bond, you know, just, just developed, uh, I mean, greater in those circles. So, um, but, but, but he, as I said, was a no-nonsense person. 
and if you did something, I remember him chastising me on many occasions when we played the sport of dominoes, when we were engaged in dominoes. In fact, Tom and I would never, he would never want to play with me as a partner because he felt I, I, was, I was not pulling my weight as I ought to as, as a partner in dominoes. In terms of Mr. Lafon's illness, he said he was aware he seeks medical treatment in the United States for back problems and also in Barbados. However, he came back in very high spirits. But what I learned of that, that really brought him down was an pneumonia that he got, or he, you know, um, he um, got an pneumonia and that was it. He wasn't responding to treatment and, and that was it. Mr. Lafon, who was the managing director of the Tropical Shipping and a member of the Dominica Cricket Association, is the father of well-known Barbados-based doctor Jeffrey Lafon. And in more news, Christmas is the time where to your enemy you forgive, to an opponent you tolerate, to a friend you give your heart, to every child you present a good example, and to yourself you demonstrate respect. This is the message of Father Franklin Coffey, St. Anne's and St. Paul's Parish Priest. My message, in fact, I, on our front cover of our bulletin, I had the whole church to read this message, which says that Christmas is more than a day at the end of the year, more than a day of cheer and joy. Christmas is really God's pattern of living to be followed each day by unselfish giving. Then peace on earth will come to stay when we live Christmas every day. Okay, so this was basically my, my message. But then I would go further than that and say, you, you know, God sees or thinks that the world is good, that human nature is basically, basically good, so that it, we are worth dying for. Father Coffee goes further into the significance of Christmas. I say that, you know, we have to be the, for the crib or the lights in the Christmas tree, for the brightness to have any significance, we have to be that star, that star of Bethlehem that lead people to the manger that really matters. And for me, this is what Christmas is all about, accepting the fact that we as persons uh, have a dignity, you know, the fact that, we, you know, our Jesus would come into our world and, and die for us. Father Coffey wishes the citizens of Dominica a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. And the Grotto Home for the Homeless and the Dominica Infirmary are among eight charitable organizations that have benefited from O.D. Brisbane and Sons' annual Christmas donations. The donations were made on Tuesday, December 18th and reflects the company's policy of giving back to the community. Sales and marketing assistant at Odie Brisbane and Sons, Mrs. Alice Dalrymple, says they are pleased to make the donations to such needy institutions, which they do on a regular basis. Each package is valued over $500 EC and will contribute to bringing Christmas cheer to the members of the institutions. Over the years, Odie Brisbane and Sons have been giving these institutions groceries on a monthly basis to assist the persons that they serve. We are pleased to be assisting this institution since we believe that in doing so, we impact many lives both directly and indirectly. Representatives of the organizations were given the opportunity to express gratitude for the company's kind gestures. Mr. Antoine Martin, who represents St. Vincent de Paul, expressed his thanks on behalf of the organization. The National Council will ensure that it is distributed in an equitable manner to ensure that it is well put into, it is put into good use. So on behalf of the National Council, I wish to thank the company and their species and wish them a prosperous new year. Some of the organizations receive from Odi Brisbane every month. The other recipients include the Alpha Center, Care for the Elderly, Grange Home and Operation Youth Quake. The sales and marketing assistant ensures that this partnership will continue through 2013 and beyond. And now for an announcement. Santa is extending our appreciation for our business, for your business and your support. So come in and celebrate Customer Service Appreciation Day with your service provider, SAT Telecoms, on Friday, December 21st, 2012, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Roseau office on 20 Bass Road. There will be eats and drinks. Santa will be making a special appearance from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. with gifts for the children. 
Happy holidays to all our valued customers. We appreciate your support and we pledge to serve you even better in 2013. Star Telecom's The People's Choice. This has been the local segment of the news. Coming up next, regional highlights.